So how did you set out to make your Robocop different from the original? Right. Well, you know, what I love about the original Robocop is, is that the character codifies or embodies an idea, which is that the automation of violence opens a window to fascism. So if you remember the original character, you had Robocop directives trying to control Alex Murphy and they were fighting. Um, and which is the idea that when you dehumanize someone, uh, you can get away with more violence. So I wanted to get that core idea and bring it to a movie that was current, that reflected what's happening. So one of the things that's different between the two movies, for instance, the idea is the same, but the rendering of the idea is different, is that the original Robocop takes place in Detroit only. Our movie opens in Tehran with uh, machines replacing soldiers, scanning Iranian, the Iranian population, putting them on databases, trying to control what's an invasion of Iran. And that's a commentary on foreign policy and, and the risks of using robots instead of soldiers uh, for interventions in other countries. Because you can think about it this way. Um, why did America pull out of Vietnam? Because American soldiers were dying. If you take away the soldiers and you put, put robots there, what happens, you know? So to go back to your question, um, we try to keep the core idea, but then do our own thing with it. Because mm. I mean, it's about that trying to get the, you want to be respectful of the original, you want to put your homages in there. Did that ever, were you always sort of uh, keeping an eye on how, how much you're sort of referencing the original? Not really, to tell you the truth. Um, I saw the original many times, and I think it, I got it imprinted in my head, and then I let it go, and just uh, went for the movie that I wanted to make, but knowing all the time that I was gonna be influenced by what was in the first Robocop. Uh, it's a, a little bit like uh, composing music, uh, you know, you listen to all the references you have, and then you make your own music, and it's going to have that, whether you like it or not. Um, it's the same thing with, um, with making movies, you know. And I want to talk about the cast. It's such a, an incredible cast. I mean, you've got Gary Oldman, John Kinnaman. Yeah. How did, um, was the chemistry immediate between them? Because the father-son relationship, I think, is yeah. between them. Really good. I mean, Joe is just a great actor, and we needed a great actor for the role of Robocop. Because in our movie, Alex Murphy wakes up and he's still there, he's aware. And the scientist, you know, Dr. Norton, played by Gary Oldman, just tells him, you know what, you're a robot now. And the guy doesn't believe in it. He says, like, what kind of suit is that? Mm -hmm. And Norton says, it ain't a suit, man, it's you. Uh, and then he goes from disbelief to wanting to die. When he sees what's left of his body, um, he thinks he's no longer a human being, he can't have that life, he says, I want to die. And Norton has to convince him that he's still a human being because he loves his family. And so that existential drama that plays between those two characters demanded great actors. And, I mean, acting doesn't get better than what Gary Oldman does. And, and Joe is really great. So the two together had an amazing chemistry. Then we had Abby Cornish, we had Michael Keaton, Samuel Jackson, um, Jennifer Eel, Jackie O'Haley, I mean, such a great, Michael K. Williams, such a great cast. I mean, it was a blessing for me. It's like being a football coach, you know, if you have a good set of players, you do well. Yeah. And where do you see it going? Have you got ideas for poss possible sequels? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just thought about this one, you know, yeah. Okay, well, I hope to see it anyway. Uh, thanks, man. Thank you for your time. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right.